Good afternoon, welcome to the Middleman blog. I'm Julian Ridden, and without further ado, let's talk about today's subject, which is ePortfolios. Now, a function that's missing from Moodle at the moment uh, is an ePortfolio system, which to be fair, shouldn't really be expected of it. Uh, Moodle is a learning management system and it tries to do that well. And so rather than trying to be all things to all people, what they've started doing is allowing third-party ePortfolio systems to tie into it. And one of the very first ones to start doing that is Mahara. Now, before we talk about Mahara, let's quickly revisit why we use ePortfolios. Um, ePortfolios are fantastic for fostering active learning within students. Uh, and along those lines also for Motorbank students uh, by giving them a place to, to store and, and display materials of which they're proud and also obviously reflection statements. Um, they're a very instrumental uh, tool for feedback from not just staff but also their, their peers and maybe even external members of the community uh, such as possible employers. Uh, and we also see them as a way of being able to benchmark performance uh, not just of the current year but with a portfolio over you know progression maybe through years 6 to 12 or, or maybe even further. So that's a quick recap on portfolios. So what's Mahara? Mahara is an open source project. It's actually being developed uh, in New Zealand. Uh, it started around mid-2006. Uh, it's being developed primarily by Catalyst IT who have done lots of work on, on Moodle over the years. If you've heard of names such as Mark Langhoff and Penny Leach, they're both actually from Catalyst. Um, it's been funded uh, originally by the Tertiary Education Commission of New Zealand uh, and these days also has continued funding um, from the Open Polytechnic uh, and also from the Ministry of Education. So we're seeing a lot of funding uh, going into a project which leads to some rather rapid development. Now I've only just started using this tool and I've only just installed it on my own surface so I thought as I'm exploring it uh, you have a chance to uh, see it in action as well. So let's jump in and I'll show you what I've discovered so far. So what you're seeing here at the moment is uh, our Moodle site here at Riverview. Uh, for those of you who've seen this podcast before, it's called Quantum. Uh, the authentication here is actually done by eDirectory. We're a Novell network, so my name and password is stored inside that. So look, I'm just going to quickly log in here and uh, go to the My Home page. Now, in my home page, I've actually created a link to the portfolio. Now, Moodle actually has a, a networking API, which is fantastic, and, Mo and Mahara, sorry, is one of the first apps to really take advantage of it. So actually, when I click on the ePortfolio link, what it's going to do, well, I'll show you, is it actually takes me into the Mahara product. But what it's done is actually connected to Moodle and brought my credentials across. In fact, if I want to go in and have a look at my profile, my name, uh, my career, uh, my, in this case, my role, my description, um, institution I've come from which is Quantum, my email address, my region, my country. These were all actually brought across from Moodle automatically. So as students log in this information is also brought across. Um, Mahara has a few different uh, fantastic tools at its disposal to help students build their own uh, custom e-portfolios. So let's just go to the My Portfolio tab and we'll actually have a look here. The first thing I want to show you is views. The idea here of course is that students can actually develop and create their own custom views for different reasons. You might want to have a view for one group of friends, uh, another view for a group of uh, mentor peers, and maybe even a view for potential employees to be able to come and have a look at. So when a student goes to create a view, let's do it from scratch actually. They're prompted for a name, so let's just call it Demo View for Podcast. They can give it a description. I'm just going to put some garbage here just to keep it short and sweet. And they can also tag it. So let's just put Moodle, Mahara, and Demo. Uh, many people have actually asked, what does Mahara stand for? It's actually a Kiwi word, which is meaning to to think or um, thought, which I, I think is quite a clever name considering what we're trying to encourage students to do. Uh, also with this view, I can choose, you know, how formal is it? Do I just want my first name? Do I want my full name? Do I want my full name and username? Let's make this uh, a relatively informal and just put Jill in. So what we've just got now is, a, is an empty view. Now students are encouraged to customise this however they like and we've got all kinds of different little widgets here that we can put in to actually customise this view. So I might start off that on the left hand side I want to show some uh, uh, profile information. So I can just click and drag this down to the bottom left. I can rename it what I like and choose what to show. Look, let's show my first name, my surname, my city, uh, let's show my icon uh, and maybe, you know, hello and welcome to my e portfolio. Excuse my bad typing. 
If I hit save, that first widget is now up and running, I can see it there. Uh, I might choose to bring in an external feed. You know, I might have, well in this case I actually have my own blog. So how about I quickly go to the middleman blog. I'm just going to first of all grab my uh, RSS feed. I'm just going to copy the link in this case. <laughs> this is what happens. Do not do podcasts when your phone is still turned on. So now I'm going to go and paste the RSS feed here. Give it a name. So let's call it Middleman Blog. I'll show a summary. I'll show the whole thing. Look, let's show the whole thing. Hit save. And now have my Middleman Blog feed coming in. If I don't want it on the side, I want it in the middle. Well, again, you can just click and drag using Ajax. So you can see here it's very simple just to try and create a custom view. Now, I'm not going to go through each of these in depth just for time, but you can see here that the kind of widgets we can add allow for all kinds of options. I can link to files to download. I can display a folder of uh, files I may have uploaded. I can ask it to display an image so I can create a quasi image gallery. I can even link to external video. You know, in this case here, I'm going to put external video. Again, I'll just quickly cheat grab this URL here of a, a video that I've had on the blog recently and just by pasting that in it recognizes YouTube, Google Video and TeachTune and Skivvy and I'm sure there'll be more coming to this over, the, over time but again I hit save and that video is now embedded so yeah it really gives a student complete control over how they want this to look and the kind of media they're going to have on it so that's the view um, as a student, of course, um, if I'm going to link to files or show images, I'm going to want a place to be able to display those. So if I go to the My Files area, I can actually go through and upload files. By default, students have a 10 meg quote. You can increase or decrease that at, at, at will. And also has a built-in search functionality. Um, separate to that, we also have built-in blogs. So rather than just being an ePortfolio tool, what we're also starting to see here is a, uh, some social networking tools. Now students can go through, they can create their own blog. You know, I can just call it my test blog. A description. This is here as a demo. Again, some tags, I'll just leave that for now. I can create a blog. And I can create as many blogs as I like. The idea that I might have different blogs for different views or for different audiences. So once the blog is there, you know, I can actually go through and actually start writing into it. And I might actually cover that in a in a separate, uh, separate podcast. Lastly, it also has groups. Again, the social networking element of allowing students to network together. Now, look, I've created one at the moment for all my students, which I'm going to put them all into. But even just as a student, students can actually go through and create their own, um, search for groups that they want to join. They can actually have invites. Uh, groups can be open or closed to invite only. They can go through and Look at who their friends are. At the moment, I don't have any, so I can actually maybe search for a friend. I've only got a few in here at the moment, so I can actually go through, send a message, or even if I wish, send a friend request. So we're starting to see some basic social networking tools. As I mentioned, this is all nice and easy tied into Moodle, so even though that this system is separate, um, when Moodle has its resets, this won't be affected. What I can do by clicking log out, it can automatically take me straight back to the My page. So look, that really is just a very quick introduction and a quick show of some of the function of Mahara. What I'm hoping to do each week is as I'm discovering more about the system and having some of my students play with it, well, I'll create more of these podcasts and show you more of this advanced functionality and, and how we're deploying it. If you have any questions, look, please do put them in the comments. Uh, we're checking those and hopefully I'll be able to answer some of the comments and questions that you post in the next uh, post on this subject in the blog. So until next time, I'll see you later.